Assalamu alaikum. Today's uh, video will be on the shoulder joint. Now I say shoulder joint, but really this area that you're seeing in front of you, it has multiple joints present there. So for your, and this is the right upper limb, you can appreciate the humerus here and the clavicle and the scapula too. I've not drawn the rest of the upper limb, so uh, we'll just focus on this part. Now, the reason why this area is so important and why it comes frequently exam is because of the complexity as well as the mechanics involved in maintaining the stability of this joint. There are a lot of muscles and ligaments which keep this place stable. Your shoulder joint is, keep in mind, a ball and socket type of joint and there's a, so many movements there and that's exactly why it is unstable. To make sure that the integrity is not compromised. You have all these rotator cuff muscles and ligaments which give support to this region. So we will start with first of all the bony structures. As I said you can see the humerus nicely over here and it is actually meeting with the scapula at the glenohumeral joint. After I remove all of these things we will be able to appreciate that area. Well, let us start from the outside. On top you can see how the acromium end of the scapula from the spine to the acromium is a meeting with the acromial end of the clavicle and here is the acromioclavicular joint capsule. So I would say let's start with the ligaments and the upper joint right here in front of us. The clavicle as you know is one of the shortest bones here and also one of the first bones that first year learn. So you can see how it joins with the acromium end of the scapula. The joint capsule, keep in mind what you're seeing is fibrous. On the inside, it is lubricated with the synovial fluid. So if I were to remove this, let's hide the joint capsule. You can see how the two bones are actually meeting with each other. And this ligament you see between the two is the acromioclavicular ligament. The easiest way to remember these ligaments is to remember the two bones. It joins the acromium end and the clavicular, so you have acromioclavicular ligament. And you have the superior one and the inferior one. This, what you see right here, is just simply cartilage on the clavicle because it's a cartilaginous joint at the end, and otherwise, the two uh, bones themselves are bony. So, all the weight, whenever you're carrying something in your hand, that force which pulls it down is transmitted through the humerus, through the glenohumeral joint, through the scapula, and from the scapula through this acromium into the clavicle. Your whole weight is suspended right through over here, and this itself, the sternal end is attached to the sternum. Keep in mind, the scapula itself is not attached to your thorax. It's free-floating on it. In fact, the only between it only has two connections, one above with the clavicle and one with the humerus. It's freely movable on your thorax. That's why you can protract it and retract it. Anyway, you might have noticed other ligaments attached to the clavicle, sorry, and down below with the coracoid process of the scapula. These two ligaments right over here are your conoid and the trapezoid type. The Sorry, not the, those are the ones around the medial end. These are your coracoclavic. No, these are the ones. Yes, these are exactly the ones. Conoid and the trapezoid ones. They collectively are called the coracoclavicular, actually. Uh, it's easier to remember the whole name, coracoclavicular, but if supposedly in the viva they ask what it's composed of, there are actually two ligaments here. And they make two impressions on the lateral end, the acromial end of the clavicle, the trapezoid. Uh, impression and the conoid impression. They simply make sure that the clavicle does not superiorly get displaced, which can happen due to the pull of the muscles. The muscles which are attached to the clavicle, if you can remember, include the trapezius. Uh, just for clarity, I would like to expose the trapezius here, so that you can see how It's not being visible, so it's okay. But uh, keep in mind, at this end, on the outside, you have your deltoid. 
I can just show over here, at least I can show you the deltoid, how it covers the entirety of the shoulder joint very nicely. You can see how the deltoid covers this and acts like a shield and protection. It has its own function as well. But if I were to remove this, then you can see that there are actually a lot of ligaments and muscles here. I don't know why that trapezium is not being exposed. Well, we can forget that for now. Anyway, so these ligaments make sure that the clavicles aren't displaced superiorly. And aside from this, if you can see over here, there is one ligament known as the coracoacromial ligament. And this ligament is actually the most important of all the ones we've done up till now. The reason being because of its strength. And it is actually due to this coracoacromial ligament that your humerus is never displaced superiorly, very well, rarely, it, it, uh, the dislocations of the glenohumeral joint, things that you call shoulder dislocation, can happen downwards mostly, anteriorly, posteriorly, but never upwards. Very, very rarely that would happen. It would take tremendous force to break through this ligament. This is your protection. It protects the displaced, superior displacement of the uh, humerus. So these were the ligaments with the shoulder joint and the clavicle and the acromion. Now, let's move on to the other. I'm going to basically hide all of these so everything becomes more clear. Let's hide them all. There we go. We can hide this too. And let's not hide the scapula. We leave that. There we go. So, looking over here, and this articular cartilage as well, we can finally see the joint a bit. Not entirely. What we are seeing here is the ligaments which are not attaching with the scapula but with the humerus. This ligament you see here is the coracohumeral ligament. I'll use this to zoom in. There we go. And right below this we'll have the glenohumeral ligament but actually what I wanted to click was the capsule. The, here we go. This is actually the capsule and again you cannot appreciate it until we expose the entirety of this region. So let's go step by step. The two ligaments, however, you can appreciate are the cracohumeral and the glenohumeral. We'll see what glenohumeral actually is from the glenoid process of the scapula to the humerus. So let's look at the muscles first before we get to the joint. The rotator cuff muscles, the best way to remember is by using the acronym SITS. S-I-T-S. -S. So the first S is actually your supraspinatus in the supraspinatus fossa. You can see how it's attached right over here at the upper edge of the humerus near the greater tubercle. So this muscle is responsible for initiating of initiation of abduction. It will cause the initial degree, a few degrees, about 10 to 15 degrees of abduction. Then deltoid will take over and will take it all the way up till 90. Below that, in the infraspinatus, fossa is your infraspinatus. And here you can see it's attached right below, right adjacent. This is involved in a bit of adduction as well as the external rotation. You can see, if you can imagine the muscle pulling on the humerus, it's going to basically rotate it externally outside. The same goes with the teres minor right below. And remember, it's sometimes hard to differentiate between the two, but the infraspinatus is much bigger than the teres minor. So these two will do the external rotation as well as the minor adduction. So let us remove these as well since we know the functions and we have no other use for them. Now keep in mind the supraspinatus which I just showed here. This muscle tends to get damaged very easily. Reason being, look how it's right below the uh, acromion process. It can get impinged very easily. Sometimes due to spurs on the acromion, enlargement of the bone or swelling of the muscle. It will then just uh, get pressed between that bone and the area below. This can damage it, and that's what you get. Uh, you get supraspinatus tendonitis. So that is one way the rotator cuff muscles can be torn. You may have heard a lot of sports players, like cricketers and baseball players, they have they, they tear their shoulder muscles, their rotator cuff muscles. It could be any muscles actually. Supraspinatus is one of the most fragile because of its size and its position actually. There's also a bursa here, but I don't think they have that visible. A bursa between the two, which nicely lubricates the region. Here we can nicely see how the 
here we go the capsule is now nicely visible and this capsule just like the capsule we saw up above the acromic clavicular it's a fibrous capsule as well inside it's lined with synovial fluid and you can see on the back side and the front side you have glenohumeral ligaments by the name you can tell here is one that it's connecting the glenoid with the humerus so these are all obviously prevent posterior and anterior displacement they're not that strong but they're still there so let's hide this one the whole capsule is visible and let's hide uh, before going there one last muscle the subscapularis subscapularis as opposed to men first panatus and teres minor will do the internal rotation right over here this is probably the only muscle responsible for doing that sort of movement and here we can see the fibrous capsule once again so I'm removing now the glenohumeral ligaments from the back side has been removed the front side superior as well as the middle have been all removed you can see there were many glenohumeral ligaments so I think there was also an inferior one yes there is an inferior one and now we can see the fibrous capsule in its entirety but one ligament remains coracohumeral right over here we remove that with that removed you can finally see the glenohumeral joint let's remove now the final and by the way there is another bursa right over here the there's one below the acromial subacromial bursa and there's one below the coracoid as well and right near the scapula as well and they're usually all connected I wonder if we can find here you can appreciate the cartilage on the humerus and how it's meeting with the cartilage of the glenoid process this is your glenohumeral joint and uh, yep this is the joint you can see finally this ligament you see here is simply for the passage of the long head of the biceps the transverse humeral ligament makes a nice uh, band to, for that long uh, tendon and uh, we will look at uh, the clinical implications as well as some other uh, procedures related with the shoulder joint in the next video, inshallah.